Hey there, Alex Kidman here, and about 18 months ago, I did the road trip from Sydney to Adelaide in an EV, in fact, in this very EV, it's a Tesla Model 3, that I'm sitting in right now. And it was an interesting drive, I wrote it up, I'll put a link to the description of my write-up below, but I'm in the middle of actually doing the same thing 18 months later, and what I really wanted to check out was whether or not the situation with charges has gotten any better. Because certainly within a Tesla, it was feasible because of the way they've set up their charging network, sort of. But look, I'll be honest, I drive this because it was actually available and the right choice at the right time. I have no love, and that's probably putting it kindly for Elon Musk. I'd rather not put money in his pocket. I'd rather support a broader charging infrastructure across Australia so that people can buy all kinds of cars. People can do all kinds of things that they want to do. But I was curious to see how that would play out and how I'd find the charges on this particular trip. So I've just done a quick little video log of each trip. Now, I'm recording this having already set off, but the first part of my journey starts in Sydney. And I'll jump now to, in fact, the first stop. First stop, the BP Pulse Charger in Maryland, southbound. Now, I'd stopped here, in fact, the last time I was going through. Uh, and at that point, they were even free chargers. There's no such thing as a free, fast charger in Australia, really, anymore. But uh, this time, they were, of course, a paid charger. I didn't need to do this stop, per se. This was not a stop which was a vital one to do from a power perspective. This was actually to do more with grabbing breakfast. But hey, if you're stopping and there's a charger, you may as well use it, right? The charging situation has also improved a great deal in this general area. There's the Sutton Forest Exeter Tesla chargers. Goulburn has two different Charge Fox sites as well as its own Tesla site. And the northbound version of this charge is also open, which wasn't the case. But I'd better get back on the road. Next stop in Yes. And what was nice here is we sort of had some choices. Uh, these Tesla chargers are actually open ones, fully open to others. And as you can see, there's quite a few other vehicles around while we were charging. But moreover, we actually had choices as to where we wanted to stop. So this was actually only a pretty quick little stop, albeit a, an effective one. I will say the Yas chargers are a little further off the road than you might expect. Yas itself is a bit further off the road. I was kind of expecting them to be at the service station that you can see from the road there. But that's not the case. Still, nice enough site. Another choice stop, this one at Holbrook, albeit this was the choice of the car. We were going to stop at Shepparton for the night to see a friend who lives there. And so this was going to be our last charging stop of the day. Not one that I'd automatically go for. I kind of wanted it to send us to Albury, the new larger, very open charges there. Instead, we ended up at Holbrook. And look, obviously, you know, charging was available, only a few things charging. Although it is a fairly tight little car park. And I can imagine when this is full, getting around and getting in and out, could be a bit more difficult than I'd really like. Holbrook to Shepparton isn't quite that far. We actually stopped in and had coffee and caught up with a friend of ours who lives in Shepparton before heading to the charges and stopping for the night. Uh, this one's really nicely serviced because it's in a Coles car park. There's a whole bunch of shops and restaurants nearby, so it actually suited us really well. Although I don't feel that there needs to be services at every charger but it's certainly nice when they're there. Back on the road again the very next day, I'm sure that mushroom cloud in the background, there is nothing to worry about, right? We better get to driving because it is a long way and get to our next stop, which was in Bendigo. Now, strictly speaking, we could have bypassed Bendigo. We had enough charge. We could have gone straight through and saved a little bit of time. But this was not just a trip about let's get to Adelaide as quick as we possibly can. I'm sure there are people out there who can probably do this one faster. This was also about doing some other stuff that we wanted to do. And in this case, we chose this particular charger because it's really, really close to the Bendigo Woolen Mills. And my better half actually wanted to stop in there. It's about five, ten minutes walk from here. So it's super convenient. But also a really nice change and a really good point to show how things have improved in recent times because the last time we were through here we used the tesla chargers and just had to go back and forth from the woolen mills here we could charge and while charging she could go off and do her shopping thing and everybody wins but also because you should actually stop and you know smell the roses from time to time enjoy not just the trip but where you're going through and that very much did this and at quite a nice price too 
Next up, Horsham. And here I made a mistake. I used the Tesla charger. It's not that using the Tesla charger is in and of itself a mistake. It's just that the last time I've been through, there were literally these three that existed and then one broken charge Fox charger in town and that was it. I was not aware, actually not that far from here, there's a bank of three of them and I would have preferred to use those just for the variety. The charging of course here was fine, although it's kind of cramped and uh, yeah, people obviously throw garbage away where they really shouldn't. EV drivers, don't be grots. Back on the road again and then a pit stop. But not so much for power, but more to recharge body and soul at the Australian Pinball Museum. I do think it's actually important to take breaks on long drives like this. And also, look, I'm not going to lie, I really like pinball and I really, really like the Godzilla pinball table. Stop in if you're on this drive. I'll put a link into my video walkthrough as well so you can click on that. But I guess we'd better get back to driving now, hadn't we? If you've never driven, by the way, in regional Australia, a lot of driving is like this for a long, 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 long time and nowhere near this fast because I have, of course, sped this up. Next up, the Charge Fox Chargers in Keith. Now, one handy thing from the Tesla side of the fence is that because there are Tesla chargers here and it's expecting to charge there, it preheats the battery. So you do actually get slightly faster charging, uh, although the Charge Fox ones here are a little bit cheaper, which is always nice to see. Uh, one slight problem here that we discovered was that the screen on this other charger was non-functional. We didn't actually charge there, as you can see, although it appears on plug it's actually functional, you just can't see what's going on. Not great to see that level of damage, though. Now, we could have got enough charge in Keith to actually get all the way through to Adelaide. Again, if you wanted to do a sprint, we actually decided that we would make one more stop so that we could actually have a meal as well as charge the car. So it was nicely charged when we got into Adelaide. Tail and Bend has a very nice large services and obviously a motorsport center. Not my kind of thing, but plenty of people do like it. And if that's you, that's great. A quick charge here, both for us with some tasty takeaway food and, of course, for the car was not super busy, which is also surprising because this was school holiday times and this is a fully open charger, so other EVs can apply. So yeah, there you have it. It's definitely getting better. There's a wider array than there was before and it seems to be improving. Fewer of those stations seem to be broken down. Now, I did want to quickly touch on the whole thing of, hang on, you're in a Tesla, and shouldn't the Tesla drivers only be using the Tesla chargers and leaving the rest for the people who can't use them? Look, I, I see the point, sort of, except that, again, I'd rather not specifically support one infrastructure, and that's one of anyone's infrastructure. I don't want it to be all Tesla, just like I don't want it to be all ChargeFox or all EV or all anything, because that kind of situation absolutely breeds an end situation where all of us pay way too much for on-the-road EV charging. Competition is a good thing. And I think supporting a wider array of charges is a really, really sensible move. I'll also just point out, for every single stop here on my particular trip, I was inconveniencing nobody. Nobody was missing out on a charger because I was plugged into it because every single step of the way there was someone here. And absolutely, if people turn up and I have more than enough charge, I'm more than happy to move because I think... That's just a sensible, polite, right thing to do. Sitting there going, no, I'm going to stay till I've got 100%. It's just dumb. I mean, it's, it's, it's counterproductive too because you waste way more time on that last 20% just because of the way the physics and the charging works. Um, but it's just, it's just a, a crappy thing to do to other drivers as well. And driving can be stressful enough. Why make it worse for people? Why make it worse for yourself? Pay it forward with a little positive karma by being willing to share and help people. That's my perspective anyway. Anyway, that's been my experience of this particular journey. Anything you'd like to know? Any comments you'd like to make? Have you done this run yourself and have any thoughts on where I got it wrong or where else I should have gone? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.